These slides contain some of my original illustrations for the presentation, Dyslexia in the Workplace. Now I'd like to show you two of my favorite PowerPoint techniques. By fading the background and adding text, you get more mileage out of the same graphic, and it links the information in a memorable way. Let's quickly look to see how this was done. PowerPoint, normal view, and I can see that this is a transparent white rectangle. If I right click on it, I can check out more information about it in the sh Format Shapes panel. I can see that the transparency was set at 24%. Zero is solid, and 100% is 100% transparent. If I gets us back to 24%. Now I'd like to show you Morph. First I'm going to dissolve up these cute little graphics. Then I'm going to get rid of the writing. And Morph is a tool that allows you to move objects without a lot of trouble of animating them. And then this is a float up effect. Now let's look to see how I created that morph and how you can create that morph. PowerPoint. And the first thing we do is we're going to need to take this slide and duplicate it. Once we've duplicated it, it's important to add the transition morph to it before I start moving around and sizing objects. When working with animation and transitions, knowing the difference can be very helpful. Morph looks like an animation, but it's under the Transitions tab. In general, transitions happen between slides, while animations and movement are movements added to individual slides. Okay, so we've duplicated our slide, and now, and we've added Morph to it, so now we're going to be able to size it and move it and let Morph create the animation for us. I put these guides here, and I'm not going to do this perfectly today, but the guides are going to help me size the graphics. These aren't perfect circles. Well, they're not perfectly the same size because they have, they have graphics hanging over the edges of some of them. So that is keeping me from um, doing this numerically. I'm holding down the shift key to make sure everything stays, stays proportionate. And even though I'm doing that, I'll need to go in and touch up the numbers. No, those aren't numbers, the letters. Whoop, let's take it down to 20. And I'm going to size this by eye. Okay, that's nice. And I'm going to place this graphic where I'm most comfortable with it at the bottom, getting as much space on the bottom as I want. And being aware of white space issues and safe title issues. And I'm going to take the top one and put it as, as up top as I'm comfortable, um, as comfortably close as I can to the title. And I'll select all three of these, and then I will align them, make sure that they are aligned to selected objects, and I'll distribute them vertically. And that will give me consistent layout. Okay, let's check to see if our morph worked. We'll go back to the transitions, and now we'll preview it. And that's how you create morph. Thanks. Hope to see you again. Bye.